So what happened is that about 10 days ago, the recovery trial actually looked at their data. They did an interim data analysis and their data safety monitoring board suggested that there is no benefit because they had enrolled enough numbers to be able to analyze hydroxychloroquine versus those who had standard of care. And they said that there was no um, benefit uh, in mortality seen, which was the endpoint used. What is clear now is hydroxychloroquine does not seem to have, or does not have, we, we know for sure now, does not have an impact uh, on the disease course on mortality in hospitalized COVID-19 patients. Where there is still a gap is, does it have any role at all in prevention or in minimizing the, the severity of the illness in, in early infection uh, or even in preventing infection? We don't know that as yet. And we need to complete those large trials and get the data. So again, we have a definitive answer on that. As a global community, what do we want? We want clear answers to these questions. We want to know whether a drug reduces mortality or not. And if it doesn't, does it have any other beneficial effects like reducing hospitalization or the need for ventilation? Uh, if those benefits are there, then we want patients to get it. But if there aren't, we want everybody to know that there's no point in continuing. So we have the same situation with lopinavir, ritonavir now, which we will be, uh, will be looking at and then deciding on whether we, um, we um, should change the, the other arms in the, in the trial. But we will come to that later. Currently, we know that the recovery trial, which I said is very similar to the solidarity trial, is also enrolling patients in um, to lopinavir, ritonavir. So between solidarity and recovery, we've already enrolled about um, I think over 3,000 patients into the lopinavir, ritonavir arm and a similar number into standard of care. So this is already a huge number and should be enough to tell us whether this drug is actually having a mortality benefit or a benefit in reducing the severity of the illness. So we're entering a new phase now of vaccine trials, the phase three trials, which are the ones that will definitively prove whether a vaccine is efficacious and safe. I'm hopeful, I'm optimistic, but uh, uh, you know, uh, vaccine development is a, is a complex undertaking. Uh, it comes with a lot of uh, uncertainty. The good thing is we have many different vaccine candidates and platforms. So even if the first one fails or the second fails, we shouldn't lose hope, we shouldn't give up. So WHO is working on a fair allocation mechanism, um, which um, we're discussing with our member states to see, can countries all come to an agreement on how you share a limited uh, supply of vaccine? Let's say you have 50 or 100 million doses at the end of this year, okay? How should the world share that? Should it go only to the countries which have paid for it or are capable of paying for it? to cover their own populations, or should it go to protect frontline health workers or the most vulnerable people, whether they are the uh, elderly or whether they are people with other diseases, and certainly frontline workers, health workers, but also other kinds of first responders are at the highest risk, as we've seen, unfortunately.